Hi, everybody. It's Jane Hamill. Welcome to the Jane Hamill podcast, all about helping creative entrepreneurs market your products, sell more of your stuff. So today, right here, I have a special guest. Hello. Hi, this is Erica Neumeyer from Rare Durndal. Erica has an amazing story, and she's going to tell you that all about how she went from, hey, I have my website up, but I'm not getting sales, to the business that you have today, which I will say is very remarkable, especially considering you have a very challenging niche. And I love to give examples of Erica's work because I know if she can do what she's doing in her niche, which is very tricky in my opinion, anybody can do it. So we're going to go back in time, if that's okay with you, Erica. Yep. And I'm going to say, all right, you have a great business now, but let's understand how you got there because I know it wasn't always little roses and, you know, (laughs) trips to the four seasons. So if you could take us back to maybe the first day you were getting your first website ready, okay, and explain what you did. How did you do it? Let's just lead it off. Okay. So I knew I had to have a killer website because I didn't have a store I was working on in my parents' house. So I found this designer guy that um, I knew through college, and he was going to make my website for me. And he gave me a good price, but it was still expensive. It was still the biggest expense that I had as a startup with where I was and living. could I ask how much it was at the time? 1200 I think. 1200 bucks. Okay. So and- not that much, but at the time it was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh no, that's a big expense for a startup. <laughs> right. And what, tell us about your product just for a quick second. Yeah. In case they don't know you and where to find you. So I sell dirndls, which are what you would wear to um, most popular and most goody, goody. <laughs> is uh, Oktoberfest, but there's a ton of other places to wear it. So the girls in the German community have uh, club picnics, events all throughout the year where they would wear a dirndl for whatever reason. Um, and so that's what I make. And I also do German inspired accessories for um, the off season, I guess. So, in yeah, the, you know, in the winter when you're less likely to wear a dirndl. So if you're thinking about like, for those of us who are not, I wasn't familiar with dirndls really, except for like St. Pauli girl, yeah. I'm, I'm afraid to yeah. say. <laughs> no, and so it's it. the thing that kind of pushes you a little bit sexy and you have yeah. a blouse underneath and apparently there's bloomers under there and uh-huh. all this cool stuff. I have been, I'm a big fan of your accessories. I'm not German. I don't go to German Fest, but I buy the accessories. So you guys might want to check that out too. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Go right ahead. Yeah. So I, um, I first started off thinking that I needed this website to look like a super designer website. I needed a 12 piece collection with a variety of things. Um, and it needed to be like, I thought if I'm going to go, I'm going to start off thinking, you know, I'm awesome. And so it was like, I thought it was Gucci or something. You yeah. Know, I needed a <laughs> landing page with beautiful photography. And he was like, oh, we will do this really cool thing. Well, everything will be horizontal. So when you scroll, the, the thing will move horizontally. It's really new. It'll be really cool. I'm like, yeah. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> the website was going to scroll horizontally, like left to right? Yeah. So when you move your mouse, like when you scroll the, the mouse, like up or down, uh-huh. the screen would move right to left. Okay. Got guess it. what everyone's like, I like those two pieces you did because <laughs> those were the only two that you saw. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and you could view the collections or you could shop, but no one wants to view like it. I was gearing it towards like wholesale almost mm-hmm. or trying. I was, I didn't know what the goal was to get people to buy stuff, uh-huh. but it was so confusing to actually find out where you bought stuff. From. This is something I see a lot. And so the guy who designed it, he's a designer or a developer or not an e-commerce specialist. So that's kind of like, yeah, you guys went with the art more right. than the commerce. Okay. Correct. Got it. And at the time I was like, yeah, let's do that. Let's be really awesome. Go Alexander McQueen yes, on this. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's me. I'm the Alexander McQueen of Darren. Well, you kind of are. I mean, that's in actually the, kind of true. But in you, the U S I guess. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, and in Germany, I was looking at all their websites, and they, the designers there have their collections on the website, and then they sell them to stores. So it's like wholesale here, mm-hmm. where you go to, they don't have a shop, because you have to go to the store to buy it. And is it a Durndl store that yeah. they go to? Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. so we don't really have those here, no, right? Okay. No, there are none. Well, there's one. 
Okay. In Chicago. Right. Actually right. Down the street from me. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln Square, Square area. Okay, cool. All right. So you start out, you have this super like, you know, designed website, super crazy pictures, really cool artsy pictures. Yep. And people are coming to the site and they don't know how to navigate. Yes. They All don't right, know where to through. go. There's like a, you go to the website, the web address, and this picture says enter. Okay. So then you have to click enter. And then it was like 65 clicks to actually purchase anything. So the people who would want to buy stuff, they just were kind of my friends and in, in the German community that I knew, and they just email me or call me. So that was not working. And about a year later, I talked to the guy and I was like, I think we need to do a, you know, a redesign. Mm -hmm. You know, it's too hard to shop. I need people to be able to go online through four clicks to buy. So were you getting any sales online? Maybe but once a month. <laughs> were your friends going online and then calling you to place the order? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Got it. But Got I would it. get, okay. I would get like once in a while, like during the Oktoberfest season. So mm -hmm. I would say like August to early October. I would get like one or two okay. people. So you knew the account. clicking in the shopping cart was actually functioning. It was functioning. <laughs> okay. It was it. functioning through PayPal only though, too. Oh, it was only PayPal. Right. right. There okay. was no way to process credit card. Got it. So then we switched to a WordPress site. Okay. Which he said is like the it's gonna it's gonna change everything. I was like, okay. So yeah. we're back to the same guy. Same guy. Okay. Because it worked out so well the first <laughs> time. Same guy, new website brighter and it was like oh yeah this is gonna be great okay it's all bright now it's not so dark it looks it's got different photos here and there and it's really cool but you still couldn't check out easily <laughs> it was still like 20 clicks to check out okay and you couldn't process credit cards so he had he, he was using the platform was um he was building his portfolio with my website <laughs> okay got it <laughs> Got it. Okay, so he was trying to show really cool pictures, and so were you. So kind of. Yeah, and at the time I was like, "Yeah, this is working. This is this is cool." And yeah. then I launched the new website, and I was like, "Hey, everyone, check out my new awesome website!" And there was like still nothing. Like, why are people like rushing to buy stuff? And I will make a point here, if I could. Mm -hmm. I remember it, and it did look good. Thank you. It looked good. So. The lesson we're learning here is looking good on your website does not mean you're paying your rent. Right. Right. There's a difference between a good looking website and hopefully a good looking one that sells stuff. Right. All right. So you got this second one up. It's been, you're like, okay, this looks a lot better. You're yes. getting any more sales? Um, yes, I'm getting more, but I think I was getting more because I was getting more traffic and I was blogging. Talk to me. So I started blogging um, because I felt like initially it was something I would, I should do but I was blogging about like my life as a designer, <laughs> which no one really cared about. They didn't really? Not really. Okay. Um, it went a lot better when I started working with you and you're like, talk to them about what they want to hear. So like German stuff, like more information and clever ideas of what to do with this. And so I started focusing more on what the customer would be interested in mm -hmm. as opposed to what I wanted to talk about and like the, the gripes of being a yeah. solo entrepreneur and being by yourself and designing and like, you know, so, a lot of it is cool, but at the same time, I don't think my customer was really all that interested. So tell me this, you started, you, your first type, website went up what year? In April, 2010. Okay. And then your second one, the brighter one was I think early 2012. Okay. When did you start blogging? Do you remember? Uh, 2011. And did you notice a difference in the traffic you got with the blog? Yeah, because there was text. My website ah. is primarily photos. Right. And Google doesn't, can't really index your photos. Well, now it can if you put the, like, title and all that You stuff. put the but, descriptions in. Right, yeah. right, right. But there was no words. Right. So right. then I was blogging and I was using all these new keywords. And so I was getting more traffic to the blog, though, which was on Blogspot instead of, Attached to my website. Key point. So then we fast forward to... Meaning, guys, sorry. Key yes. point meaning don't do that. Because if you're driving traffic to your blog spot, your shopping cart is not close enough to that. You want Correct. it. Okay. And then it looks like a different website. Because right. they are different websites. And it's branded blog spot. Correct. Yeah. So it would look different. It was confusing. But at the time, I thought it's, it's fine. 
Yeah, because was it sort of like, I think, was it like, this is what I can do? Yeah. yeah. And at the time, that was fine because that's what I could accomplish yeah. and what yeah. I could do. Yeah. And then I realized it wasn't working. Because you're not getting sales. Right. Okay. Um, and now you and I was another... just so oh, annoyed because I had trouble purchasing something from my website. <sighs> you know, like my mom had trouble purchasing something from my website. So if my mom, who knows my stuff and who knows my website, and she's having trouble purchasing something, then how's Joe Schmo going to buy something for his wife when he doesn't know what he's talking about? Yeah. And he's not computer savvy. And he's not as committed right. as your mom. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, oh, okay. So this is frustrating. Yes. And how much did you spend on that second website? Do you remember? Um, just about the same, if not more. All right. So about 2,400 in. So yeah. we still don't have a website that's able to like check out. Correct. Okay. So I would say it was maybe six months to six to eight months. And I decided this isn't working. I know I just spent all this money on this website and all these extra widgets. So you could check out with a credit card and mm-hmm. all this baloney. Yeah. And um, I looked into Shopify and I was like, this is, this is what I need. It's built for shopping and I want people to shop. Yeah. Built for e-commerce. Yeah. Correct. I want to sell stuff. I want to make money. I don't care about the pretty collection anymore. Like you don't need to view my past work because you can't buy my past work. So why do you want to view it if you can't buy it? That is a big battle I have with a lot of true designer types. They want to have their past seasons up there. And I have trouble understanding why, because it's really more of an ego thing, I think. Yeah. And it's, it was really cool. And you want to see, look at all the cool stuff and look at each collection as a different inspiration and see how different they all are. But then you get a call that you, they really want this piece, but you can't give them that piece because you don't have the fabric. You don't have any of it. And then they're disappointed. Ding. Time waster. Yeah. For both of you. And they don't buy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Because they can't get what they want. Because now their heart is sort of set on that piece. Right. Okay. Got it. Yeah. All right. So you're like, okay, Shopify is made for e-commerce. I'm cutting my losses here, which I got to give you credit because it's hard if you've just spent that money and it's only been six, eight months. So props to you. You moved to Shopify. And I did it myself. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> which I know sounds weird and crazy, but I just, I felt like I could tackle it. Yeah. And there was going to be no middleman. Got it. I didn't have to call up, you know, designer guy and say, this isn't working and then wait three weeks for it to be fixed. Right. Right. Oh, if God. it needed to be done, I could do it. Mm-hmm. I could update things as per season. I could update things for a sale instantly. And Ugh. that's what I loved about it. And the so, learning curve of learning Shopify. Tell me about that. It wasn't so hard. Okay. It wasn't as hard as learning code to update the other website. <gasps> okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Because so- I still don't get it. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. Because it's not English. It's not <laughs> anything. I don't know what it is. Or German. It, yeah. No, it's nothing. It's a bunch of like colons and then these bracket things. And I'm like, this is how you, this is how this happens. And the greater than less sign. Alligator. Right. <laughs> yeah. And then you delete one of those and the whole page is page error. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> Oh my God. All right. So you, you pick a theme, you go to uh, Shopify and yes. you immediately like, like start uploading your, walk us through that. Yeah. So I looked at the templates and I was like gushing over this checkout process. I'm like, Oh, you can scroll over the image and it zooms in. Right. Like that's what I want. And you don't need a widget for that. Yes. So it's built in. Okay. Um, I can add this and this, and it's got a checkout and you can process credit cards and you can add shipping and it automatically tallies the tax if it's in Illinois. And I'm like, this is what I need. So I just took it and I jumped in and I bought the, the theme for, it was 150 bucks. Mm-hmm. And then I had to upgrade because once I started putting in all my products, I was like, damn, I have a lot of products. Right. So, um, but the process I don't think costs nearly all that much. Okay. I do pay monthly though. That's okay. Yeah. But, but do you sell stuff? Yeah. <laughs> right. Now people buy stuff. Now... <laughs> the phone goes cha-ching. I'm like, oh yeah, got a sale. So you've switched to Shopify. What happens now? You're still blogging? Yes. Okay. 
So the other thing I did is I hired someone through what, Upwork, but it's called something else now. It's called Upwork now. Oh, it's called yeah. Upwork now. Okay. It used to be Odesk, I think, right, or right, Elance right. or one of them. And I said, here's my blog. I need it to be on a wordpress.org and I need to look exactly like my website. Okay. And it was a couple hundred bucks later and it looked exactly like my website. That's it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, by did- a couple, I mean like five, six, I think. Okay. So did they take your past blogs and put them on yeah. yours? Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Right. So all my past blogs from 2011 to whenever were on this new blog mm-hmm. and it matched my website. It didn't look like you were going anywhere else. Great. Had the same bar. You could still go to shop. It was so easy. Um, and that was so important because the theme didn't have any text again okay. on the homepage. Got it. So for the most part, people find the blog first okay, and then find the shop as Which opposed I, to finding the homepage. Yeah, I'm down with that. That's, I, don't I, mean, care, that's, I don't care how you get to the checkout. I just want you to check out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you get to the contact page first. As a matter of fact, you can get to the like, you know, whatever you want yep. as long as you're shopping. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So then let me ask you about your decision. And I know I have strong feelings about this, but... um. Actually, I'm changing a little. Every every month, if you ask me a question, I might give you a new answer as, as technology <laughs> changes and things change. But so why did you choose to, so you switched your shopping cart and your site to Shopify, but you you decided to have a WordPress.org, not a, not a free one, but the paid, not expensive, but a right. paid WordPress blog. Why not put your blog on Shopify? Um, you told me to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, tell them why. <laughs> um, I'll tell you why. Yeah, I recommend you tell it. Me, because, I mean, well, I know that the Shopify blog isn't super. It's not. It's not all all that awesome. And if one day I do change from Shopify to something else, my blog doesn't have to change. Right. Yeah. Is no, this is it. So, okay. <laughs> so my opinion, and I, I stick with this for you, um, for serious bloggers, for people who are like Erica just had a three day sale where she sold $24,000 worth of merchandise in three days. So her blog is a huge part of her business and she does videos and she does, she, you're fearless now with this girl. I try. You, you're fearless. <laughs> I mean, I know you have fear before you do it, but like you have taken a lot of risks and it has paid off, you know, 90% of the time. So somebody, if you're, if you're in the content marketing game and you're going to produce content for your business to draw people in and then lead them to your site to buy, um, if you're starting with, starting with Shopify, Shopify is amazing. You'll probably stay with it. Some people don't. Some people hate it. Some people want Squarespace or WooCommerce or all kinds of things. And then you're going to have to switch your blog over every time. Shopify has a perfectly acceptable blog. You can totally do your blog on Shopify. If you're really going to do it, I suggest WordPress because WordPress can do so much more for a blog. WordPress is not a great site for e-commerce. I totally wouldn't, I would never use it. I don't recommend it. No, (laughs) it's right. But um, if you do decide to switch your shopping cart, your blog will always stay. To me, the blog is the heart of every business. And I don't mean you have to write articles. Right. It's just the piece that is constantly being updated with content for the user to give them value, connection, relationship. And it shows them that I'm still, I'm still there because okay. I, I blog every week. And so that says the date there. Mm-hmm. And so when I go to somebody's website and I'm looking, you know, it's hard to tell, like, is this business still here? Right. Because a lot of times business is closed, but their website's still up. Truth. So then the blog shows people that I'm still still alive, still, still kicking it, still making your nose. Yeah. And give them uh, the confidence to make an order. Right. Yeah. Right. And then it answers a lot of questions too. So it's in the beginning, it was tough coming up with content every week. Mm-hmm. Um, and some days I'm still like, Oh, it's Tuesday. I don't know what to write about. Um, but somehow I, I do it. So, it comes up. and tell me about the diff- the change in what you produce. So at first you were more telling your process mm-hmm. and lo- what it's like to be a designer. And when you switch to talking about, well, German theme stuff, what's the difference? What happened? Um, I was talking to someone specific. I okay. was thinking about like, what does she want to hear? What does Jen want to know about? She wants to know why she should wear a petticoat for some events and a slip for other events and bloomers for another event, or why she should wear multiple things at a time. Or then there's other customers who need a dirndl because they're going to Oktoberfest. And the most common question is, 
what shoes do I wear? Oh, and God, my answer is yeah. like, whatever shoes you want to wear. Oh, no, I would but, never know what shoes. <laughs> right. But people are like, oh, I don't know what shoes. Do I need socks? Do I need these fancy socks? Do you sell the socks? So then I started answering those questions in little pieces. And, and videos. And videos. And um, it's it's been really great. And the videos, I need to do more because people are always like, you're so great. I feel like I know you. And yeah. when they feel like they know you, then they'll buy easier. And so they do, right? Because they're mm-hmm. they're again they have um, more confidence. And there was get one guy that was like, "I don't need anything you have, but I, I want to buy something." I was like, "Oh, thanks. that is so great." Was he like creepy, creepy no. guy, or normal guy, normal, normal guy. guy? Okay, normal just checking. Guy. Yeah, just checking. <laughs> yeah, no, but he he saw the video and he was like, "You're just so genuine." And I feel like I wanted to support you, so I'm oh. gonna buy something. So he bought a pair of earrings for his daughters. Oh God, I love that. So all right, so. Keep going. I'm sorry. You, I know you have things you want to tell us, and I want to hear everything. I don't. I'm... Um, I don't think... Oh, the um, and then it being clear oh. on what you're selling from the homepage. Talk to me. I'm still struggling with this. Okay. And I don't know. It's it's something I don't know how to necessarily fix. Okay. Because I do that peak user testing, where someone goes on your website and looks at it for the first time and describes like their experience through the site. Yeah. I will, I will link to that in the show notes. It's P E E K user testing. And you get a five minute video of a regular person, not someone in your niche using your site. Right. And it's killer. It's awesome. (laughs) Sometimes it's not so great, but it didn't cost you anything. So, but other times it's really helpful. And, but the biggest thing I see is they go to the website and they're like, is it bridal? Is it Renfair? I don't know what there is. It event planning, like oh. I, I mean, this it's all over the map. What they and it takes a while, but once they 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 get there, uh-huh. eventually they get there. Yeah. Um, but I don't know how else to to do it on my website besides like having a picture and be like, I make dirndls. Yeah, and I guess you have to also say, here's what a dirndl is. Yeah, which is on there. It's yeah. just not like on the homepage. Okay, got it. Because I Are, feel like. For the most part, my target target customer knows what it is. Yeah. Or knows what they're looking for. Yes. Oh, so, they do? They do? I think so. Okay. So like you said, Jen, that's your buyer persona. That's your yeah. target. Okay. And then do you have the two, do you have two buyer personas? One who's like a hardcore into the German thing. Yep. And one who's like, I'm going to go party in Munich. Yep. Okay. Exactly. And those are, those are the most common kinds of people. There's people who need a dirndl for an event. Mm -hmm. So for Oktoberfest, for a wedding, for whatever thing they are going to specifically this event. Mm -hmm. And then there's the people who have four dirndls in their closet already and need something fresh and new and are just itching for something else. I like them. Yeah. Oh, I love them too. (laughs) So you switch to Shopify, you're pumped, you switch your your strategy blogging towards what would she want to hear rather Mm -hmm. than what I feel like talking about today. Did you start getting orders right away? What's, what, how did the orders start coming in? What are they buying? How did you end up where you are today? Um, I don't necessarily know the answer to that question. Hmm. I think it was just kind of an accumulation of yeah, what actions more were you customers, taking? more people are n- new about the brand in the community because it was already four years in. Okay. Um, and... I was getting more traffic through um, a lot of people are finding my site with Google, which was not the case early on. Google searches. Yeah. That's the blogging. And, and that's absolutely the blogging. Yeah. Because otherwise they, there was no other way. So it's free organic traffic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I also tried to pay someone to do the SEO and that didn't work either. I've never really heard that working for anybody. No, they but changed that. It was like, come visit me in the design studio. And then they're like, we need to put keywords in here. Sexy Oktoberfest dresses. Come get your sexy Oktoberfest dress. <laughs> we make sexy Oktoberfest dresses at the design studio. I'm like, no, this, the word sexy and Oktoberfest dress are on this page 20 times. I get it. Google's onto that, by the way. Like, they reject those pages. They don't even, yeah. <laughs> I look like a creep. <laughs> How many of your clients are Googling? I need a sexy actor press dress. I, Any of them? Like, I canceled the SEO guy okay. that day. No joke. Maybe just for Halloween costume. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing is people are like, oh, this would make a great Halloween costume. And then they see the price. I'm like, oh, maybe not. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and then did that used to bother you? Like 
the Halloween the, dress thing? Well, the the price resistance or any of that, like. Oh well, yeah, the price resistance was really tough in the beginning, um, and it's. I mean, it's still something I struggle with. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think you can necessarily get over that, but it's getting better because I know that that that's just what it costs. Yeah, that's that's the end. I can't do it for any less. Otherwise, I will be working for free, and I can't do that because. That's not, that's not how any, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> I think the definition of business is transactions of money yes. coming in. So you gotta have money. Yeah. But, but, but at the end of the day, profits as opposed to just sales. But I think also what's changed with you too is your site looks the price. Yeah. You know, like it, it, it's working. Right. All right. So, but, but talk to me about specific things you did. So you're getting more traffic. You think that's from the blog. Yes. Okay. You did choose keywords and you, you dabble them not only in your back end of your site, but on your blog. Right. But it's not my main focus anymore. Okay. I just organically talk about what I want to talk about. Yeah. And if I'm talking to one of my two personas, mm-hmm. they're going to Google up those words. Okay. So she's not necessarily talking just what she wants to talk about. It's right. about what they want to talk about. Too. Right. Okay. Got it. And using terms that they, <clears throat> excuse me, that they would use because then that's what they're going to Google. That has been, you guys, please listen to Erica on that. <laughs> What, talk to me about what you mean. Well, I've seen what people are, um, what do I mean? Like lingo and industry speak. Oh, yeah. So It's not what they're Googling, right? Right. They're not Googling like center front lace up corset style front. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that's not what they're looking for. What are they looking for? Or they're looking, they say corset front. Sexy October. Right. And I think I'm like, oh, that's just so, ugh. the whole like idea, like corset front just like gives me the heebie jeebies. But that's what they're looking for. So I say lace up corset style front as opposed to just corset front. So in the beginning, when you were all up in that Alexander McQueen stage, right. you never would have compromised on that. No. No. And it would I, be I like- talked about the different, the piping and the, the trim and what kind of trim it was, but nobody knows and the those hand terms. Work. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that that's, they just don't know that they They don't care. They don't care. Okay. And now if you use their terms, does it bug you or you're like, I don't care at this point, as long as there's a, uh, a mesh of like you. Yeah. Okay. And as long as it still has my voice. And I also like stop taking myself so seriously. Like I saw Dandels. It's about beer and brats and singing and dancing. And it's not like, I'm a designer, (laughs) you know, like, I yeah. realized that I have to just be myself, which is a little, you know, quirky and bizarre, and put that towards being a genuine person behind the brand, mm-hmm. creating things I love, creating things people want to buy, and it just kind of went from there. And I just, they, everybody seemed to appreciate that a lot more than... Serious version? Right. And how- I'm also not very serious. <laughs> You and you're one of the genuinely sweetest person people ever. Oh, I don't think thanks. I've ever met with you where you haven't shown up with like today she brought soup. Okay, <laughs> one one year you you send me a okay you're the client by the way she's the client she's sending me an amazingly gigantic lemon cake for Thanksgiving. Well, that I send my, that to my manufacturers too so that they don't get mad when they have to call me and be like <laughs> we need more piping. <laughs> Well, let me tell you, my family's still talking about it. So you are genuinely one of the nicest people on the planet. And I think that comes through. And so how did you, how do you mesh or decide between what you want to do and what they want to buy? So one time I remember I went to your studio, right? Oh, yeah. (laughs) She was talking about this this morning. I go, oh no, save it for the show. Um, so you came by and I was all excited. I'm like, oh my God, I got to clean up. Jane's coming. So I put on, I put the stuff on the mannequin and I hung up my new collection, which was fall 2013. And it had a variety of things. I was all excited. I had a sweater. I had some menswear. I had this cool vest and a pant. And you came in and you looked and you're like, that's nice. So why do you have pants? <laughs> I'm like, Oh, because it's a well, it's a well-rounded collection. Like, you know, you have to have pants and separates and, and then I have two, three deer and dolls and you're like, do you sell any pants? I'm like, well, no, my, my mom likes the pants. <laughs> and you're like, don't make pants if you're not going to sell pants. It's just confusing. That's cray cray. And I'm like, oh yeah. So now I, picture a vest with pants so you can see that it's with pants but it's just jeans 
I don't actually make pants because I don't make pants. And you didn't make any money on pants? No. Do you make any products that you don't make money on still? No. Right? Because if it doesn't make money, I don't. I take it off the site. Newsflash. And then I give it as a gift. That's good. <laughs> Here's a free gift. So if you were going to start over today, if you're like, oh, Erica, I'm you, you know, in 2010, and I'm going to start my business from scratch, what would you say? Like, like, ser- like I, I hate to say, what advice would you give? But like, seriously, yeah. if you had to say like, oh, guys, just look out for this and this, what, what would it be? I would start, I would start the blog talking to the customer. Mm-hmm. I would know more about who I'm talking to. So that buyer persona, I wish I did that. Yeah. Because I didn't do that until three, four years into it. And, and I have a new buyer persona that I'm teaching in the, um, sell more products online class and it's better, right? Yeah. Like, it's, yep. it's, uh, it's different because you pick a one, a real person. Right. And at than... the time I might not have had a real person. Yeah. Um, I would have, I would have had, no, I would have had a real person. That's true. I, what night I might not have had two. Got it. But I would have had Got at it. least one. And the one would be like who you want to sell to the most, yep. the person who could be, could buy it, like yep. a real person. Okay. Right. Yep. So now I pick the people I like working with the most because I want more of them. Yes. But originally I could have just picked a customer that I know, I know well, because I it was kind of marketed towards a lot of my friends, mm-hmm. um, which I know isn't for everybody, but that's, and then I would have also started with some type of website platform that's made for selling. Okay. So in this case, it's Shopify, which I totally recommend. There's other good ones out there though, too. Mm -hmm. Would you, if somebody hasn't started yet at all, would you suggest they start their blog first before they're ready to sell, to start building that audience? Yeah. You would? Yeah. Because I do, but I'm not you. you, Yeah. But then that, that way you can talk about the process. Okay. That's the time to talk about the process. Yeah. Right. And, um, and that's kind of the interesting part to people to build the interest is like, how it's going, what are you doing? But at the same time, talking to them and providing other advice and other information too. So not a hundred percent. Right. So it doesn't have to be you, just not, about. Yeah. Okay. A combo. And then why do you think you're selling so much now? Like things are, orders are coming in mm-hmm. and is it less work to get the orders? Same amount of work? Like, um, I think I still put in a lot of work. Yeah. I still put a lot of work into um, Facebook and email marketing. Yep. Oh my God. Email. Totally. Free. That's the other thing I do consistently is email. Yeah. But sending them stuff from the blog. So it's information. It's not like buy my stuff, buy my stuff. So which, so, okay. So tell us your marketing activities. You do Facebook regularly. Yeah. That's your biggest platform, right? The one you focus on the most or yes. is it Instagram? Uh, no, it's Facebook. Okay. Facebook. And then you're emailing once a week. Yes. And you're doing a blog once a week. Yes. And um, you're also designing and selling and you have like a whole product-based business. Yes. Tips to fit this all in. Mm -hmm. Strategies to fit this all in for anybody who's like, oh my God, how am I going to make this product and and market like Erica does? Um, I do be (laughs) be organized. (laughs) I need to tell it to myself. Um, you know, just do what you can. Yeah. You know, perfect is good, but done is better. Yay! Okay. Uh, you're, yeah. And which of these, okay. So Facebook, email, um, blog. Yeah. Videos is on blog. Yes. Um, some Instagram. Yes. Paid advertising. Are you doing any? Um, like magazines? A- anything. Facebook ads, uh, magazines. Yeah, I'm doing anything. Facebook ads. Okay. Because I used to do like German magazines mm-hmm. and all I get is I'm going to go, ah, oh, this is nice. Can I have a catalog? I'm like, oh, oh, right. I don't have a catalog. Clearly not the target audience. So the hardcore German people don't want, they, they're they not going to buy online. No. Well, I mean, the people that still get the magazine are not. Oh God. <laughs> Dumb question. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so, so um, I'm like, I have a website. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, the interwebs. <laughs> How do you say interwebs? No. So, um, I took all that money, which was a lot and put that into Facebook and I'm seeing results because I can target very, very specific people. Do you spend as much on Facebook ads as you did with print advertising? Do you really put that no. budget in there? Not all of them. Okay. What if you did, what would happen? That's a great question. I'm, I'm just know. curious. I, it, a, 
I'm not sure if it would bring in more. I'd probably get more Facebook likes, likes, but Facebook likes don't mean sales. Right. Um, but I don't know. I should, I could throw, I I've been throwing a decent amount of money at it this, this, this month. You can, you can see if I do an ad, I get a sale. Like you can yeah. see that. Okay. So, yeah, because if I'm pushing, I have a picture of this necklace Yeah. and I say boost it for $10 mm-hmm. and it's a $40 necklace right. and I sell one. Yeah. Like it's obvious correlation. This person saw this necklace on Facebook and bought it. And so if that is happening, why not put more money into boosting it? Do you think your audience is just not that big? You don't need to spend more money or? Well, no, I, I guess know. I should because the reach, I have 10, I have, I broke 10,000. So I have 10,000 um, Facebook followers. That's and awesome. on average, even if I boost it, maybe a thousand people see the post. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I could do more. I'm, I'm wondering because I think I've seen your ads. You, I've done a case study of your ads and there is instant money coming in when you do it for certain yeah. pieces, you for know what you're pieces. doing. And, um, so I would say, put, I would put more money into yeah. the same. It's mostly thing the accessories, like the, the lower price stuff. Yeah. yeah. And do you think the accessories are the gateway to the expensive dirndl sometimes, or you're not usually they're two different people? Um, sometimes. Yeah. But there's a lot of, a lot of times it's also the other way around. Um, it's, they have a dirndl and now they're buying the accessories because they don't necessarily need another dirndl right now. Yeah. And you are the master of cross-selling, upselling, downselling. I've seen you work. It's really good. I'm trying to be better (laughs) at at that, like figuring out like this person likes this stuff. Maybe they'll like this, Mm -hmm. um, getting, getting there. Can Shopify do some of that work for you with algorithm wise? Um, I think so. I haven't looked into it. That might be a really good thing to do some dynamic behavioral response mm-hmm. email marketing, which is if you bought this, you're going to want this after seven days of they've received this product, I'm going to show them this. And after seven more days of having bought it, I'll show them this. Yeah. Like you could get, we can start getting really fancy now. Yeah. All right. So those don't worry about like, um, uh, what I just said, guys, if you're just getting started, cause that'll freak you out. <laughs> Listen to what Erica said. Okay. Okay. Anything else you want to mention? I don't think so. I think that's it. I love it. So um, the takeaways that I got were your first website's probably going to suck. And that's okay. Because <laughs> then you'll learn. <laughs> I learned yeah. my, and it wasn't even that bad. It just doesn't do. Anything. Well, it didn't convert is no. the problem. Okay. So, so, but if you keep trying and you cut your losses, you know, sunk cost in that old website, if I want to sell, I can't keep clinging to it. Right. Move on. Right? right. Okay. And then, um, you're, you're steady, steady with the marketing. You are very steady. You are very an absolute con- star student. Consistency. And oh. that, and that um, I had a college professor that not, I mean, every class, consistency, consistency, consistency. And that's all I hear in my head oh, that's great. whenever I'm doing something is consistency. Because if I try to switch it up this week and then switch it up next week, that's not enough time to see if it's working. Oh my God. I usually say 90 days. But it's really hard to wait. It's hard to be patient right. for entrepreneurs. We're right. so antsy. Oh, and I didn't I get still, results. I, I should switch. Don't. I'm like, oh God, it's not working. <laughs> yeah. But I have to really remind myself to give it a little bit more time. Well, I, um, I was at the incubator the other day. I, I'm a mentor with the Chicago Fashion Incubator. And I had all six designers in the room. And I was telling them about, you know, this, this types of strategies, like blog on a consistent basis. You can start out every other week, whatever you can do, and mm-hmm. then work up to how Erica's doing it. And I said, for instance, I'm doing this new thing called steal this idea, which is a marketing or sales idea that I see like at the car wash this morning, actually, that you could use for your business. And I said, I haven't been that consistent. And then I had an idea, but I got cray cray. And I said, I am going to commit right now to 90 days every Friday publishing steal this video. And I've said things like that before and I don't follow through. Right. So I said in front of them, I said, if I don't do it, I want you guys to commit to something today too. If I don't do it, I'm going to pay each of you a hundred bucks. There's six of us. <laughs> like, oh, so you need, you need oh, to get Oh, I'm going to get down on it. I, I, <laughs> I am not paying them a dollar no. and I want to prove I can do it. And of course I can do it. I used to do it for years. I just kind of got off my game. Yeah. So if you are having trouble, be consistent, maybe threaten money towards somebody. Make someone else accountable to remind you or to you know, yeah. make yourself accountable some way. Yeah. That's a good idea. Well, there's, there's, there's that company 
where, or is it uh, Tim Ferriss that suggests if you want to make sure you stick to something, write a check to a charity that you hate, an organization you hate. Okay. Hmm. So if you're anti-guns, you write a check to the NRA, Yeah. you give it to your not best friend, somebody, and you say, if I don't complete this, mail it. Hmm. Brutal, right? Yeah. Because you're not going to want to give money that to is. I know. <laughs> so at least if I, if I lose my challenge, I don't mind giving money to these people, you know? Yeah. So maybe I should have made it that I have to give money to, you know, something. But that's made, still a but- lot of money. Oh God, it's a crap ton of money. I don't want, I'm not doing it. Yeah. All right. Do you want to, do you want to give them a challenge? Anybody here listening? Like how about, how about one little challenge for them? Yeah. Think of uh, people like in the, in the summer products course, like what would you suggest they do now? A little assignment. Sorry. I uh, sprung this on you. Yeah, it totally did. <laughs> but my thought is, my thought is write a blog post, not for yourself, but for your customer and keep it short. Okay. Tips to keep it short. Anything? Keep it short. Um, three paragraphs yeah. or three paragraphs. Um, maybe it's like an intro. Keep it within like your style, your brand, but talk to them, give them something they need, not something you need. That's awesome. All right. So I'm going to ask you after you take the challenge from America, get down on it in the, in the um, comments on the blog and of this podcast. And so if you're listening to an iTunes, there's a link back to my site, go there and let us know what you did. Okay. Leave your, leave your link. I want to go read your blog post. Okay. And we're going to give them like what, seven days. (laughs) You You need a deadline, right? Yeah. Okay. So whenever this goes live, I'm going to be looking for the comment saying, Hey, here's my post. All right. Yep. Let me know if you enjoyed this podcast. Give it to me. This is a podcast video cast. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, leave me a comment either way. Like maybe this is, you know, maybe it's a thumbs down. I don't care. I just like hearing from you. I do this to hear back from you guys. Okay. <laughs> I like talking, but I really like hearing from you. And if you're listening on iTunes, leave me a review. An honest review would be really appreciated. Okay. Thank you, Erica. Thanks. You are the best. I'm going to go eat my soup. (laughs) (laughs) Bye guys. Have a fantastic day. Take care.